Everyone loves our friendly neighborhood web-slinging scamp Spider-Man, but I'm sorry to say that he's not the one caught on camera this time. No, this video surfaced on Twitter of what appeared to be one of Spider-Man's nemeses, Venom. But is it really an alien symbiote invader here to take over Tom Hardy's body so he can star in a middling Marvel movie? Or is it something even more sinister? And what other weird, worm-like creatures are out there? This video is sponsored by Dashlane. Let's start with the most palatable of the worms I've found, the Velvet Worm. They usually grow up to 15 centimeters and kind of look like caterpillars. They have 13 to 40 pairs of little feet that they move by changing the pressure of internal liquids within their bodies. It's kind of like a biological hydraulic system. Each of those little stubs are outfitted with a single claw that they can extend, kind of like a cat. Yeah, cat? Uh-uh, too many nubs. Their scientific name, Onychophora, even means claw bearers in Latin. This phylum contains over 180 different species, and similar to tardigrades, which we discussed in an earlier episode, they may look a little like arthropods, but these little cuties are part of a clade that broke off from their cousins over 520 million years ago. And you thought you had a distant relationship with your family? Velvet worm reproduction is actually super interesting too. Males have two elongated testicles, which connect to a single sperm duct. And strangely enough, their sperm cells are actually 50 times larger than human sperm cells. Females have a pair of ovaries, but they're typically fused together above their womb. Fertilization takes place internally. Since there are so many species of velvet worm, we encounter the problem of the sheer diversity of reproductive techniques. Some species of velvet worm practice placental viviparity, meaning they give birth to live young with a placenta. And some practice non-placental viviparity, meaning that they still birth live young, however they gestate in an egg inside the mother, consuming a yolk to gain nutrients. Then there are those that are oviparous, which is when an egg develops and hatches outside of the mother's body. Now, velvet worms may look more precious than a herd of baby ducks, but they're also pretty efficient predators. They're primarily nocturnal, so they navigate their surroundings using a pair of antennae to feel and sense the world around them. When they find their prey in moist equatorial forests, they'll shoot out a sticky string in a crisscross pattern to bind and capture would-be meals up to 30 centimeters away, a little like Spider-Man. Like their name suggests, their skin is as soft as velvet. So soft. Their entire bodies are covered with papillae, little protrusions that help the worm sense moisture. They are set like overlapping scales, which help them waterproof themselves, in addition to making them soft as all heck. Oh man, I wish I could hold one, cause, cause I imagine that holding one of those little guys is like getting a big hug from a friend in a super soft sweater. And here we come to perhaps the worst part of the ocean yet, the bobbit worm. Because of the worm's affinity for cutting fish in half. The worm was named after Lorena Bobbitt, who, in 1993, after her husband came home drunk and forced himself on her, the last in a long string of similar assaults, waited until he had fallen asleep and chopped off his penis with a carving knife. Uh, bro, so you're saying that she cut off his- Cut off his penis, yes. Can we move on? Thank you. The Bobbitt worm is endemic to tropic and subtropic waters of the Indo-Pacific Oceans. Don't worry though, we likely won't encounter one of these bad boys since they're primarily primarily nocturnal, and they live at underwater depths of 10 to 40 meters. These worms are omnivorous bottom feeders, consuming algae, seaweed, other worms, and fish, which they catch using an apparatus called pharynx, a scissor-like set of mandibles that sits inside the worm's body when not in use, but unfolds into a deadly pair of shears when the worm is hunting. It waits in sediment along the ocean floor, using the five antennae located on its head to locate prey. It can attack at a speed of 20 feet per second, carrying back whatever creature unlucky enough to be caught in its nightmare jaws. The bobbit worm can grow up to lengths of 10 feet long, though there are unconfirmed reports of these worms growing up to 50 feet long, longer than a yellow school bus. Wow, that sucks to think about. They are also usually colored dark brown to gold red, often with flakes of luminescent purple. Honestly, they're quite beautiful. If you don't look at their scissor face or think about how there's meters more of them lurking under the seafloor, Speaking of lurking, Grell, what are you up to? Shush, 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 shush. 
I'm trying to concentrate. Is that a velvet hoodie? <sighs> I was trying to buy something online to compete with that soft worm guy over there, but I can't find my blockbuster receipt that I wrote down all my passwords on. Oh, Grill, you don't need to worry about remembering passwords if you use Dashlane. They'll generate secure passwords for all your accounts and even autofill them for you anytime you need them. Okay, that solves one of my problems, but what about the whole credit card song and dance, huh? You know, you gotta get out your wallet, take out your card, then you gotta read it. Type it in. Come on, who's got time for that? Also, I lost all my credit cards. Aw, oh, Grill, you silly goose. Check this out. Dashlane will save and autofill your addresses and credit card information so you can be in and out of your online shopping faster than ever before. They keep my credit card info? How do I know that they're not gonna lose it? That's what I thought too, but Dashlane's got it handled, yo. All of your information is decrypted with your master password locally. What's that? Remember that time you tried to take the rest of Bruce's coffee cake so you stole the entire fridge? But the coffee cake was locked in a safe within the fridge. So you're saying that even if Dash Lane's fridge got hacked, they couldn't get at my personal information cake? And I only have to remember one password? Exactly! Dash Lane also works across all devices. So even if you get a new phone, all your logins will still be there waiting for you. Yeah, well, convenience always seems to come with the price tag. Check this out. I got this sweet, sweet deal. That price tag gets you VPN, dark web monitoring, a password safe, and breach alerts together for what any of them would cost alone. Dashlane is free on your first device and is giving 10% off the premium version for a limited time, which you can redeem at https colon slash slash www.dashlane.com slash brew with the promo code brew. You had me at deal. Speaking of deals, it's time to deal with this. Oh, f***! Oh, I, I forgot about that one. Ha <laughs> ha but it didn't forget you, Grill. It's not actually the Venom symbiote. It's a bunch of bootlace worms, or Linnaeus longissimus. This creature is a part of the ribbon worm family, the Phylum Nemerti, and get their name from their shoelace-like appearance. They are the simplest creatures in the world to have a circulatory system, and a discreet gut with a mouth and an anus. That is, unlike me, the ocean churro who has only one hole for everything. <laughs> Find out more in this video. <coughs> oh gosh, doing that voice really hurts my throat. Most ribbon worm species are under 20 centimeters long, but the bootlace worm puts all their cousins to shame, stretching out to a maximum length of 30 meters. While most of them are uniformly colored, there are many species that are brightly colored, striped, dotted, and many more patterns. In some cases, ribbon worms have been seen to be able to regrow certain parts of the body using a process called strobilation. Essentially, their bodies are segmented such that each segment can regrow the rest of their essential organs, therefore allowing them to reproduce asexually. It would be like if someone cut you in half, your lower half would grow back a torso, and your top half would grow back some legs. Worm cloning is cool and all, but this creature also has a unique toxin, and a somewhat uncomfortable way of applying it. Ribbon worms are sometimes referred to as proboscis worms. For mammals, a proboscis is just a really long nose. Think of an elephant's trunk, an aardvark's snout, or the proboscis monkey's entire face. For invertebrates, a proboscis is a long mouth part used to grab, suck, and trap food. It's part tongue, part throat, part something else. Oftentimes, these worms will not be able to retract their very sticky proboscis back inside their bodies, but leave it behind. This isn't a problem though, since these worms can ditch their gross food tube when they like, and as we learned earlier, regrow it at a later date. The proboscis in the bootlace worm is coated with a pretty potent peptide toxin. However, it won't affect you and I. That's because this toxin affects invertebrates more so than anything else, causing almost instant paralysis in the German cockroach, fruit fly, and varroa mite, as seen in a study by Uppsala University's Professor Ulf Göransson. Many researchers are curious about learning more about this toxin, because if it doesn't affect humans, it could be approached as a safer alternative to harmful insecticides. Just because life happens to divert away from what we've come to understand doesn't make it any less beautiful. This real-life symbiote may just be a pile of sticky worms, but it's what those worms have to offer us and their environments that makes them amazing. So, no, unfortunately we're not looking at alien life on Earth. But fortunately for us, the things that live here are alien enough already.